Hey guys, I'm John Grimsma and welcome to Knife Making Tuesday week 51. So although I've got about a thousand projects going on right now, I'm going to take some time away and show you the progress I've been making on my new knife, the Integral. I don't have a name for this knife yet, so far it's just called the Integral because that's what it is. Um, last week's video I sort of explained the theory behind this and what's going on basically. We're taking a huge chunk of thick titanium like that, using a slitting saw to mill out where the blade goes when it's closed and it's going to be a solid chunk of titanium knife. Um, so the past week I've sort of been um, not exactly following my Knife Making Tuesday plan where I just take Tuesdays aside. I've sort of every night I've been working on this knife because I'm so excited about it. But um, Yeah, so I've got it all designed in CAD and I figure we can go inside and uh, I can sort of walk you through some of the processes on how I designed this thing and, and the the way that I start from nothing and design something new. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that, but I wanted to thank everyone who gave me uh, you know, condolences and said get well soon because last week I was pretty sick and now I'm back to about 95% so I'm, I'm feeling pretty good now. I get, can get back to work and you know, finally get some stuff done. So the past week has mostly been inside. I didn't want to be outside in the cold garage and, and feeling miserable on top of being miserable. Um, so I've been inside for most of the past week and designing like crazy. I've been feeling very creative lately, so I've designed probably a dozen new projects, whether it be fixtures or, or tools or knives or products or whatever. So uh, that's been really cool. I've been very productive doing that. I just feel bad that I'm, I, I haven't been out in the shop, you know, making stuff. So uh, this week's going to be all about making stuff. But um, yeah, so let's go inside to the computer and... Uh, start designing my integral or show you how I designed it and I'll show you what it looks like now. So here we are in my office. Um, you know, door, picture of Mount Baker. Love Mount Baker. Um, you know, printer, wife's desk, my desk. Two screens, um, depending on how late it is. I often like to watch a show or a movie on one screen while I'm working on the other and depending on how good the movie is, sometimes I'll just be looking at this screen, even with my body is facing in this direction, just watching the movie the whole time. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, so, blah, 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 blah. Um, these awesome knives, GTC knives, made from Timascus, possibly Moku Tai, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so let's go into uh, screen capture and I'll show you what I've been up to. So when I design something, um, I do it probably different than a lot of people do. A lot of people are, they, they'll sit down with a pad of paper and they'll just write down like a hundred ideas and sketch them out or whatever. Um, I kind of suck with a pen and paper, so I like to see things in CAD. Um, it just works better with the way my brain works. And it's hard for me to create something out of nothing, so I can't just like sit down in an empty CAD screen and, and start drawing stuff. Um, so usually I start with something existing. <clears throat> so here I just dro dropped in a, uh, a handle for my Tor knife. This is for the fixed blade, you know, for this knife right here. So I dropped in one of those handles and that gives me a, a starting point. So what I'll do is I'll start with that. I'll save and copy the file so that it's, you know, its own file. And since I'm making an integral frame, there's just one handle, not two. So I need to sort of strip this one down. Um, delete a bunch of the features and just strip it down to bare uh, bare simpleness okay edit that get rid of the holes, get rid of that um, I don't need the double frame okay so there's sort of the outline of my tour handle and since I want the knife to be smaller I can you know, scale the whole thing down, scale it from the middle point, scale it down, whatever. Um, for this demonstration, scale isn't really important, but now, of course, there's a problem. There's always a problem. Okay. So there is my handle. I'll make it thick enough. 0.5 inch thick, starting with half inch titanium. Looking pretty cool so far. I can change the 
you know, the angles. Sometimes. Depending on how the lines are made, like this big black line here is just one long spline. I can't, like, break it up and change it. Um, I can take the spline tool and I can draw over it. So I can make a new pattern like that, delete that one. You know, it looks stupid up here, but... Oops. Undo button is your best friend. So I don't know. So you can tweak it like that. Um, when I designed this knife, the first night I started working on it, I worked from about uh, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Pretty much straight. Watched a few shows on the other monitor, but um, I got this thing designed pretty good within that six hours to a point where I was really happy with it uh, for a starting point. Um, and I'll show you that after I show you kind of this basic stuff. So it's an integral, so we got to cut a slot out of the middle here. So we'll start a sketch at the top surface. Uh, I'm just going to guess something like that, and then up, and then just around. So I'm going to cut away everything inside this circle. Oops, Daisy. Undo. Okay, extrude cut. Now from this view, you can see where I'm going to cut. I'm going to offset it. Uh, I forget exactly how much, but something like that. The slot's going to be 0 0.15625. And there you go. There's the basic frame of my integral. Yeah, it still looks like the tour. You know, I can tweak a lot of that. And then here, you can see this curve is a, a way that I curve the handle. So I can take that, I can move it, I can mirror that around that axis. So that goes like that. And I'll show you what this looks like. Right now it's just, you know, a series of lines, but once I extrude cut that for six inches the other direction, then that contours the handles really nicely. Now it's starting to look cool. Now with machining, you can't really make this contour without 3D machining. So that's just like I do my tour handles, go zigzag back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it takes a while, but it's really cool. All right, so that's the handle for the blade. Um, okay, the other thing I'm going to do is drop in my Norseman knife. So I go here, find my Norseman assembly, drop it in. Because the Norseman knife is something I'm intimately familiar with. Um, so I can, I can judge the size of the knife by that. This handle is actually quite a bit smaller than what I intended it to be. I do want it to be a smaller knife, but this one's kind of ridiculously small. Um, so as for the blade, I'll drop in my Norseman blade. As you can see, it's kind of ridiculously huge. Sort of put it in the middle. Um, and then I can go in here and tweak the size of it until it fits. Here's the sketch. I'm just going to shrink that whole thing down. So you can see here's the outline of the blade. There's a box where it's kind of my, my stock material. Uh, it doesn't have to be there. All these circles don't really have to be there. Those are old. So if I want to get rid of the thumb stud and make it sort of go down like that, I can. If I want to change from a recurve to maybe just... Maybe just a flat bevel. I can do that. And I want this knife to be a Warncliffe knife. A Warncliffe style blade. So I'm just getting rid of all this junk. All that doesn't have to be there.
Okay. You can see here I've got two different flipper tab uh, shapes. Um, the dotted line is not active and the, the solid line is active, so I can play with, I can go back and forth between them and, and figure out which one fits better, which one I like better. So if I want this to be a worn cliff, I will maybe connect these two, connect them like that, get rid of this little guy, or that little guy? I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Maybe extend this a little bit, make these two at a tangent so they look okay. Same for those two. Anyway, something like that. So I can exit the sketch. Alright, so here's a blade with no bevels on it. Now when, when designing a knife, um, most people and most of you are going to be hand grinding these blades. So you don't need to design the blade completely fully finished with bevels and edges and everything. Um, it's just kind of pointless work. It's actually kind of tricky to design this in and get it to work and fit right. Um, but since I'm CNC machining my edges and my bevels and everything, I need this to be exactly accurate because that's how it's going to machine. Um, so for that purpose, I get a lot of questions, guys asking me how to design these sweeping bevels, and I'll, I'll show you real quick. Um, so, let's see, let's just open this blade by itself. There's two things you got to do. Um, you see over here, I got the cut sweep function. Once I open that up, you can see there's two sketches. One sketch has just one sweeping line that follows the curve of my uh, bevel there. And then the other sketch, not that one, then the other sketch you can see is right there, except if you move to the side, you can see the V of the bevel right there. So these blue lines are the V that, that get swept into the bevel. So when you combine those two arcs, Maybe I can show these two lines. This line is the sweep for this V of a bevel. And then you go up here to the uh, swept cut feature. And you select those two, and then it just sweeps it across. Like so. So you can see there it's cutting both sides at the same time. That's your swept cut feature. Um, getting this angle accurate is tricky but I'll show you the trick because I'm awesome. So the trick for getting your bevel at a certain angle is to create just a little box at a weird angle here. Okay you can see this black line is the angle that I want my bevel to start sweeping at if that makes sense. So you extrude the box and then you'll click on this face right here to start to set your new sketch on that face. Um, and you're just gonna have to understand that yourself. I'm not going to explain it any better than that. Um, yeah, and you just kind of keep messing with this stuff. Uh, for this bevel here, I've got the same thing going on. The sweeping line right there, and then the sketch up there. Done. So I'm going to close that. So anyway, that's sort of the start of my Warncliffe Integral. And then what you can do is you can you can mate these two assemblies together. So now these two holes are perfectly concentric. And as long as I um, freeze the handle so you can't move it, then the blade will rotate along that axis. I can make the, the handle transparent. So now I can see that obviously it's going to hit right here, it's going to hit right here. And there's actually collision detection in the software if you want to use that. But yeah, so obviously the handle and the blade don't fit together very well. So that's about um, that's about the process I go through, and then I just keep messing around with it until I get something that I like. So you can see with the Norseman here, if I hide that handle, I got the stop pin right here, and you can see how the blade pivots around everything. And this is what I like about CAD is that you can you can fit everything together. You know, if it fits in CAD, it's going to fit, hopefully, in real life. Okay, so I'm going to close that before I break something. 
and then I'm going to open up the real knife. So I've probably put at least 10 hours into designing this, probably more like 20. Alright, so there we go. My Norseman versus my proposed integral design. Um, the yellow color is just a, a high, high contrast color so I can see what I'm doing, but um, what do you think? I am in absolute love with it. I think it looks freaking amazing. Uh, it's not a final design by any means, but I think it's just nuts. You can see I got some measurements here. Don't need to keep those in. But yeah. So it uses my standard pocket clip that I make for the Norseman, uh, just because I love it and it's easy and it works really, really well. It's got the stop pin back here. This will be a custom made stop pin that I'm going to make in-house by myself. I'm actually going to machine this T10 Torx head into it. Um, it's a frame lock, it's a flipper, solid titanium. So this is one solid piece. It's going to be on ball bearings, of course. Uh, thin ground Warncliffe blade. One thing that I really like about this is that here you can see the flipper lever actually hides within the handle. Uh, Alright, now I can rotate the blade. You can see the flipper lever pops up in the top here. And then I'll hide the pocket clip. And so the blade will close to about there, hopefully. Um, you can see how close it's getting to the frame, to the back end. Uh, so i got to make sure not to let it close too much, or else it's going to hit, obviously. But yeah, so hopefully um, everything is going to work out good. The flipper tab sticks up there, but then it hides nicely behind there. I think that's just amazing. So you can see what it looks like closed. It's going to be a much smaller knife, as you can see, compared to the Norseman. Uh, the blade's going to be about three inches long. So three inches from about here to the tip. Um, and it's going to be a very tight, compact knife. I'm super duper 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 excited about it. The blade stock's going to be a little bit thicker than the Norseman. Uh, coming in at about 136, 138 maybe. Norseman's 125. But uh, I'm just blown away by how exciting this is. Um, I got some pretty cool little grooves here. Just to give it some detail. They go all the way back. I just happen to have a tool that is exactly that arc. And so I put those grooves in. I think it looks awesome. So over the next few weeks and months, uh, hopefully in my spare time, I'll be able to make some of these. I just bought titanium, half-inch titanium, um, enough to make 12 of these and I'll be buying blade steel soon, so these are going to be super exciting. So guys, um, that's about it for this week. Um, I got work to do. <laughs> it's, you know, 10 p.m., time to get to work. Um, so, if you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments, and uh, keep it real, yo. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.